The prosperity preachers teach that we can actually speak things into existence. Watch these clips. I love Pastor Joel. You know, a few months ago, I saw one of his sermons called I Am. I want to talk to you today about how your words become your reality. I said, now that is a life class. How to start confessing the Word of God out loud and calling things that were not yet a reality in my life as if they already existed. See, because the minute you say something, you transfer. You own what you say. You know, it's not magic, but those words go out of our mouth and they come right back into our own ears. There's a power, there's power in your words. They start to change our own self-image. I, I, I would really not believe that the words that we speak are that important. You are where you are today, in part, because of what you've been saying about yourself. You, you read Genesis 1, then God said, then God said, then God said. When you speak something out, you give life to what you're saying. There's healing in your mouth today. It is so important what comes out of our mouth. Your power is in your saying and believing. There's abundance in your mouth today. If you continue to say it, eventually that can become a reality. There is a miracle in your mouth today. I think Isaiah might object to that. He said, I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell amidst the people of unclean lips. Whether you realize it or not, you are prophesying your future. False forms of Christianity are satanic stumbling blocks. Any misrepresentation of God is a, is a satanic stumbling block. Hello everyone, this is John Henry with the Gospel of Christ and welcome back to a new video. If this is your first time on the channel, I invite you to subscribe and click the bell button to be notified each time we upload a new video. Okay, I want us to look at some of the doctrines now of the Word Faith Movement. We'll begin by the doctrine of positive confession. The prosperity preachers teach that we can actually speak things into existence. Watch these clips. In Romans 4.17, the Bible says that we serve a God who calls things that do not exist as if they already existed, and He speaks life to dead things, and they come back to life. So that's how powerful your words are. You can speak life into dead circumstances in your life, and you can see the resurrection of power of God in your life. I know for a fact that something didn't happen until it was decreed. I mean, it was actually... It, it sounds strange. I don't know how to describe it in the time that we have, but it was almost like something was withheld till the decree was made. When the decree was made, that, that reality was released into that situation and reversed it. It's vital okay. that we say what we're saying. Even God, I mean, He spoke things into being. There's something about the declared Word that really helps to facilitate His purposes. You, you read Genesis 1, then God said, then God said, then God said. Uh, you, you'll never find that it says, then God waved His hand. He never created that way. He only created by speaking. And we were created in His image. So there's something in the area of us speaking that has a creative force of either life or death in our lives. I'm speaking something into existence. If that sounds eerily like God's act of creation, in Genesis 1 and 2, that's because it is. Dear ones, only God can speak things into existence. That is not something that you and I can do. The Hebrew word for create is bara, and only God baras. Only God does that. And in case you may be thinking, oh, well, well they don't really mean by that what it seemed like they meant. You know, it, it just took them out of context. They don't actually teach that we can speak things into existence like God did, do they? Well, yeah. This is a tweet from Creflo Dollar. As spiritual beings who possess the nature of God, we have the ability to speak things into existence just like God did. Yes, they do teach this. Absolutely. And I'm People accuse me all the time of taking these folks out of context. No, I'm not. I wouldn't want to take, I wouldn't want anybody to take me out of context, and I'm not doing it with them. They do teach these things. This is not an aberration. This is mainstream word of faith. Most of the charismatic movement, all of the word of faith movement, all of it. As was pointed out earlier, there are some people in the charismatic movement who would not go into word of faith land. 
But unfortunately, once you take that charismatic position, and we'll talk more about those issues tomorrow, the um, apostolic gifts and things like that, how God does and does not speak. But once you take that charismatic position, it is a very slippery slope right into word of faith. Few people put on the brakes. vast majority do not. This next clip you're about to watch is a gentleman at a TEDx talk talking about the laws of attraction and positive thinking. This has nothing to do with Christianity. It has nothing to do with the Bible. It's just positive thinking. And that same teaching is brought into the church by false teachers, false prosperity teachers, making you think that what you name and what you claim in your positive thinking will manifest into your life. We don't take serious the things that we feel we deserve enough in order for them to manifest into our lives. And how do you stop that? Real simple. Monitor what you feel. What you constantly think about, that is exactly what you get. If you keep thinking, I'm, I'm, my luck is never, I, everybody gets it but me. I'll never have that. I'll never live in that house. You know, that's for them, whoever them or those people are. When you constantly think about how much bills are, what do you end up with? More pink slips, more bills. When you constantly think about, I don't want to gain any more weight, or I, don't, I need to lose, uh, you know, lose some of these bad habits that I have. I want to stop smoking. I'm not going to smoke. What do you do the minute the pressure hits? You go get a cigarette and you smoke again. You get frustrated and you eat again. And as you continue to do these things, your thoughts and your feelings equal the manifestations that you get in your life. Now, I want you to pay close attention to Joel Osteen. You will see word for word what the previous gentleman was talking about is exactly what he is teaching to his congregation and literally to the whole world and everyone who follows his teaching. This has nothing to do, again, with Christianity or the Bible. This is purely laws of attraction, what people use in the world to be successful and to live their best life now. Your life will move in the direction of your words. But too many people go around prophesying just the opposite. I never get any good breaks. I'll never get back in shape. Business is slow. I'll probably get laid off. Flu season is here. I always get it. They don't realize they are prophesying defeat. It's just like they're calling in bad breaks, mediocrity, lack. The scripture says we will eat the fruit of our words. You are planting seeds when you talk. At some point, you're going to eat that fruit. My challenge is make sure you're planting the right kind of seeds. Here's the million dollar solution to that. First, monitor what you think about. Circumstances, paying particular attention to the nuanceical things, as we call it, the little things. If you stop worrying about what happened in the past and feeling guilty or have being anxious about what may or may not happen in the future and operate in right now, you will train your subconscious mind to begin manifesting the things that you truly desire. In other words, you can't talk negative and expect to live a positive life. You can't talk defeat and expect to have victory. You can't talk lack, not enough, can't afford it, never get ahead, and expect to have abundance. If you have a poor mouth, you're going to have a poor life. If you don't like what you're seeing, start sowing some different seeds. Instead of saying, I'll never get well, Joel, this sickness has been in my family for three generations. No, let me give you the right seeds. As you can see, Jill Osteen is very smart at what he does. So what he does, he takes the exact same principles, the exact same laws of attraction and positive thinking, and he throws a couple Bible verses here and there. He says Jesus' name here and there. He says God's name here and there to make you think that this is Christian. In all reality, this has nothing to do with Christianity whatsoever. That's how much of a wolf this guy is is if you keep talking like that you'll reap a harvest of good things james said in the scripture with our tongue we can bless our life or we can curse our life 
Many people don't realize with their words, they're cursing their future. Every time you say, I never get any good breaks, you just cursed your life. I'll never be able to afford that nice house. I'll never break this addiction. I'll never meet the right person. No, stop cursing your future. If you keep thinking, I'm, I'm, my luck is never good. Everybody gets it but me. I'll never have that. I'll never live in that house. You know, that's for them, whoever them or those people are. Sometimes the enemy doesn't have to defeat us. We defeat ourselves. Pay attention to what you're saying. Are you blessing your life or are you cursing it? False forms of Christianity are satanic stumbling blocks. Any misrepresentation of God is a, is a satanic stumbling block. You're a stumbling block to me. Outside the church, there are many stumbling blocks, but inside there are many as well. Ignorance is a stumbling block. Misrepresenting God, Christ, the Holy Spirit, misrepresenting Scripture, all of that is a stumbling block to the purposes of God through the church. It's foundational for the church to confront all that is evil. That is why it is such a dangerous thing to have and it's very common today, somebody decide they're going to start a church, pop up, rent a place and say they represent God and propagate ignorance. And you know you're hearing Jesus say, get behind me, Satan. That's a misrepresentation. The whole prosperity movement's a misrepresentation. It's a stumbling block. It's in the way of the progress of the church in the will and purpose of God. False teachers abound there everywhere. The reason there's a seminary here, the Master's Seminary. The reason there's the Master's University is because we need people who fully understand the will of God as revealed in Scripture to be leaders in the church so that the church doesn't have people in it that are obstructing the very purpose for which it exists. Now we know that Satan sows tares in the midst of the church and we know, Paul said in Acts 20, perverse men will rise up in the church and lead people astray. So we have to be aware of that. We do everything we can to guard the truth, preach the truth, interpret accurately the Word of God. That's why we take men and for years we put them under godly, skilled, erudite handlers of the Word of God so that when they walk out of that place, they are ready to live a life that honors God and not be teaching something that is a stumbling block to the very purposes of God. This is the true church. This is the true church. It doesn't take up Satan's side. But today, in so many false churches, Satan is in charge. And what is being propagated is an obstruction to the movement of the truth and the true church. True church then, known by its great confession of Christ, its submission to Scripture, its contrast with the world, its cross-centered triumph and willing to face the conflict with the kingdom of darkness and face it as good soldiers ready to go to battle with all their armor on and with the sword of the Spirit. This is our calling as a church. This is it for this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think about the subject in the comment section. If you'd like to support our channel, you could do this one of two ways. You could join our Patreon and support us with a monthly donation, or you could join the membership of our channel by clicking the join button. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome. I hope you subscribe. If not, I hope to see you in our next video with Love in Christ, John Henry with the Gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm.